Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. I read a comment recently, I don't know where, maybe it was Reddit or so, um, where the person said, well, there's been so many years that antivirus programs exist and that people work on them, so why are they still not able to detect malware perfectly? Oh, well, yeah, what's the problem? Can't be so hard, right? The thing is, it's actually not possible to create a perfect antivirus solution. And uh, we will start diving into that um, with Fred Cohen. Let's look into that. And after that, we will talk about malware in general because virus is the only subset of it. Yeah. All right, so Fred Cohen made his paper in 1984 and he created a definition for a computer virus first. Um, it was not such a common thing back then, so he said a computer virus is a program that can infect other programs by modifying them to include a possibly evolved copy of itself. So maybe you remember, or maybe you've seen my last video on virus infection strategies. The example Cohen uh, provides is a prepending virus. So he will say this virus will prepend to the host file and uh, then that means it will be executed because it's first. And it, upon execution, it infects other files and then it may run the code of the host file. So that's a very typical prepending virus um, and just an example of one um, version of it so all right now his paper um, will make a proof by um, well by stating the opposite let's assume there is actually a perfect solution for this a perfect virus uh, detection program and then he will contradict this statement therefore the uh, perfect detection program does not exist so so let's assume we have a perfect one, we have viruses, we have good files, and the detection program will answer the question, is this a computer virus? And in case of the virus, it will always say yes. In case of the good file, it will always say no, because it's perfect, right? So is this a virus? Yes, no. Um, but now he had this idea, let's assume we have a um, pretty weird program, the maybe virus program, that's how I call it. He just called it virus, which is a bit weird because, well, let's see. Um, so maybe virus. This program will decide if it's a virus or not based on the output of our perfect detection program. So if the, the virus scanner says, yeah, you are a virus, this program will decide not to be a virus, just not infect anything ever. Yeah. But if the detection program says, no, you're not a virus, it will infect other files. So there we have the contradiction. So that means the perfect detection program cannot exist. It's just not possible. We have one example that will um, disprove this. So what does this mean in uh, this case? This says the virus detection is an undecidable problem. Well, in the mathematical sense, an undecidable problem just means that there is no algorithm that will perfectly decide about this question. So this is about being perfect. This does not mean that we can never decide whether a file is malicious or not. Um, it, there's just no perfect solution. So, um, but there can be a solution that is just good enough. So, and as you maybe know, antivirus products detect malware, not just viruses, but viruses are a subset of malware. So the same thing is true for malware in general. If we cannot detect the subset perfectly, uh, we also cannot detect um, the superset of it. So there's that. Now, I don't know about you, but when I started studying computer science, um, I had at the beginning, I had a hard time to wrap my head around these proofs. Like, why is it a proof if I just find this, uh, you know, if, if I make this contradiction and then I don't get it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. But maybe um, it will be a bit more clear if I give you some more examples. So, let's assume we have a program that downloads and executes a file. Is this a malicious program? Well, actually, it depends on what it downloads, right? So, but the thing that are being the things that are being downloaded may change. Like someone may uh, suddenly um, replace the file on the server with a malicious file, and before it was just a good file. Let's assume you have a setup um, program that uh, loads other files and executes them, 
to make the installation happening and someone replaces these files with malicious files and suddenly it's a malware download and not just a setup program um, and the file itself didn't change at all so it's just the external circumstances that make it malicious right so that's quite difficult uh, because the scanner malware scanner usually just decides based on the file that's on the disk so um, also, if you have a uh, remap access tool, for instance, this is not in uh, in general whether it's malicious or not. It depends on how it is used, right? So you may use it to help someone with technical problems, but you may also misuse it and um, you know to gain access to someone's computer without their authorization so what do you do you generally decide on how the program is used in most cases like if it's a very common tech support tool uh, that makes it quite hard to misuse it by because you know it may have some security measures like you have to input a number that the um, technician provides um, the technician has to input a number that the client provides so, uh, before they can make a connection and maybe the client program will always notify you oh there's someone else on your system so you know and so that it's hard to do this without any authorization and you may also not be able to silently install it so this would be all more an indicator that this is a good program whereas um, rats that uh, remote access tools that include functionality like uh, um, you know eject the CD drive for no reason and um, add some ransomware I don't know anything that's more and more jokingly and where you have silent installs and where you have anti AV stuff added that's certainly used in a malicious sense because it makes it easier to misuse the program and um, yeah, or if it adds a steal or anything, but of course if it adds malware, it's malware. Um, yeah, but that's uh, kind of difficult. So you also have these tools that are right in the middle, in the gray area. Um, so sometimes antivirus companies may declare them as riskware instead of saying it's malware, it's good. Then it's a risk. We don't know if you want this. So they would say it's potentially unwanted, it's a risk. So, you, so if you want it, keep it, but if not, Please get rid of it. Sometimes you have programs, you know, that do harm and do good at the same time. So what are you going to do with them? You might have to weigh, um, well, which of these sites is um, more important. So um, Cohen has made an example of a compression virus. Like this would be a virus that compresses all the files on your system. So you get more space. You have more space available. And back. In his time, it was pretty um, good to have more space because there wasn't that much. But on the other hand, this um, virus will make your system slower because every time you uh, start a program, it uh, has to decrypt the main code of the program before it can run. So the performance will drop and this program has uh, pros and cons. But in my opinion, if it's a virus, it's malware. Uh, even in that case, he says uh, the virus will ask for permission before it compresses anything imagine you actually run this on your system and have to give permission for thousands of files i don't think you want this in any way so that's a um, malicious program and also considering that if a file is compressed it will also try to compress other files because otherwise it wouldn't be a virus so no, that's not a good program, not at all. But yeah, I guess you can imagine some things where it's really hard to tell whether the file is good or not. Um, sometimes it depends on how much the people use the program. Like you could have um, a program that has a lot of downsides where you would usually say, oh, who, who does, who wants that? Like it may have ads in it and it may monitor your system and it may not tell you that it does this, but it's also pretty cool messenger and all of your friends use it so uh, and maybe it's the only messenger that is available for your language and you have no alternative so if it's used that often and so widespread it will not be detected also not as a spam so be because obviously people want it and they despite all of the um, downsides of the program in some cases um, we have files where i had to ask my, several of my colleagues before deciding what to do with it like some cases are just difficult 
and it will always be. So, well, maybe you have some examples for me, like uh, put it in the comment section below if you have some, some other examples where you would say, okay, that's a really, really gray area where I couldn't decide whether, it, whether it's malicious or not. <laughs> so yeah, and if you have any questions, do so too, ask them. And um, yeah, that's it. So, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.